Hillary Clinton crawled out of the hole that she lives in, a place called hell, last night and sat down with CNN where she declared that virtually everybody who still supports Donald Trump needs to be sent to a re-education center because when you live in a communist country, those who don't support the ruling party enthusiastically enough, well, that's what happens. And sadly, so many of those extremists, those mega extremists, um, take their marching orders from Donald Trump, who has no credibility left by any measure. He's only in it for himself. He's now defending himself in civil actions and criminal actions. And when do they break with him? You know, because at some point, you know, maybe there needs to be a formal deprogramming of the cult members, but something needs to happen. Something has to happen. He's on track to easily win the Republican nomination and probably even the presidency. So he's been in court this whole week because the George Soros funded prosecutor, Letitia James, and the corrupt judge are trying to strip him of his businesses in the state of New York. They're literally trying to just take Trump Tower, another building that he has in Manhattan, and a golf course in New York from him and bankrupt him by finding him a quarter of a billion dollars because they claim that he fraudulently inflated the value of Mar-a-Lago to use it as collateral for a loan to purchase another building or another property. And they're claiming that Mar-a-Lago is worth only a maximum of $25 million when there are properties right next door that are worth $25 million when Mar-a-Lago is a 17-acre luxurious estate. And this is Letitia James, the woman behind this corrupt scheme. The president of the United States has complained that I'm engaging in some sort of political witch hunt, that I've got some personal vendetta against him, that I campaigned against him. That is not true. This illegitimate president who sits in the White House. That president, because he's not my president, he's an illegitimate president. His days are numbered. His days are numbered. We've got to get ready to mobilize, and we've got to get ready to agitate and irritate until victory is won, but more importantly, until Trump is defeated. We will all rise up and resist this man. And ultimately, we'll bring him down. Gee, she's not biased at all. And here's President Trump's response to this kangaroo court, which, by the way, is she's probably heard denying him the right to a trial by a jury. The judge just declared that he's guilty. And so this phase of the trial, just like they did to Alex Jones, is to determine how guilty he is. I borrowed the money. I paid back the money in full, 100 percent. There were no defaults. There were no letters of reprimand. The banks were extremely happy. And in many cases, I paid the money back early. And then I got sued years later by... This horrible attorney general, this woman that ran for governor and failed. You know, she did this because she was running for governor. And then she ran and she failed. She had no calls and they forced her out. And she came back and she became attorney general again. Uh, and we got stuck with her. So she brought the case under the statute that had never been used for a thing like this before, ever. We're not entitled to a jury. Because if I had a jury, even though it's in New York, and I think I'd be fine with it, New York. But if I had a jury, we'd win this case very easily. But I don't have a jury. And you see what's happening. This is a railroad. And it's the beginning of communism in our country. This is the beginning of communism. Here's the judge in the case who already violated Donald Trump's constitutional right to a trial by a jury using a legal loophole in the civil court system called a summary judgment, where he just single handedly decided that. There is so much evidence against Donald Trump that there's not even a need for a jury to decide whether or not he's guilty. Here he is admitting that even if he allowed it to go to a jury, which of course he should have, he's violating his Seventh Amendment right, but there are all these legal loopholes, that if the jury did not find him guilty, then he would have just overruled the jury anyway using another legal loophole. Now, I'm going to say something controversial, even though I'm being taped. Juries get it wrong a lot. That's my own opinion. I do only civil trials, personal injury cases, contract disputes. But I've had situations where like, oh my, my heaven's sake, how could they have thought that? Well, I have a, um, I have a tool that I can deal with that. It's called jury notwithstanding the verdict, judgment notwithstanding the verdict. I can say 
There is no possible way that a reasonable jury would have reached that conclusion. There's no way after seven years of the liberal media industrial complex constantly demonizing Donald Trump that a jury could possibly find him innocent. <laughs> so I unilaterally declare you guilty. So obviously they're pulling out all the stops and grasping at straws, hoping that something, anything will sink the support for Donald Trump because both the Democrat and the Republican establishment thought at this point that he would have been finished. So last week, Cassidy Hutchinson was on the media tour selling her Operation Mockingbird funded book, a former Trump administration aide, just trying to do something to convince the American people to stop liking him. That obviously didn't work. So now they're rolling out John Kelly, Donald Trump's former chief of staff, who goes on the record for the first time confirming several disturbing stories about Trump. Remember that fake news story from the 2020 election where the liberal media claimed that Donald Trump called veterans suckers? Well, they're recycling that, claiming that John Kelly, former White House chief of staff, confirms Trump's disparaging of veterans. You know, he might have actually used the word suckers, saying that the government treats them like suckers, sending them off to a bunch of bogus wars. He certainly wasn't calling them suckers. But of course, anything that he says can and will be used against him. So they're trying to get veterans to turn against him, but that's not going to work because I don't think they're going to be siding with old Joe because, well, if Joe Biden gets reelected, they're going to Ukraine. And the government almost shut down again last week because, well, we're out of money. And a handful of Republicans refused to vote on the budget if there was going to be tens of billions of dollars more given to Ukraine. So they agreed on a temporary extension of a month and a half to just keep the government open without giving Ukraine any more of that money. So the Republican establishment and, of course, the Democrats are very upset about that. So Joe Biden's going to be giving an important address very soon, not saying that he's going to seal the border, not talking about the housing crisis, the inflation problem, the debt crisis, uh, the crime problem. No, no. The biggest problem in Joe Biden's mind is we're not giving Ukraine any more money. What's the future of Ukraine aid? And as I understand it, the president's going to have something to say about that in the not too distant future. That's right, Major. He said today that he's going to have a major address that he'll be giving soon about Ukraine aid and how important it is and uh, filled with warnings about what it could mean for this country if the U.S. doesn't provide more Ukraine funding uh, in, the, in the short term. What it means is the United States will go bankrupt slightly later. There's no stopping it at this point. It is inevitable. It's just a matter of when, not if. And I feel terrible for the Ukrainian people, but I'm sorry. We don't have any money. We're broke. I'm not even going to get into the Speaker of the House debacle. Thank God it's Friday. But all of the neocons and the Republican establishment shills are very upset with Matt Gates for putting forward the motion to vacate, which was, of course, voted on. So former Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy is gone. And when all of those people are upset about it, you know that Matt Gates did the right thing. I fully support Matt Gates, and of course, I support President Trump. And if you do too, order your Wanted for President shirt from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>